we've come here before and um, actually got like the camera slapped off of a tombstone and we've visually seen things, we've audibly heard things. It's funny that shut off. Shouldn't. Can you come out so we can see you? Can you come out in the light a little bit? Can you make some kind of a noise? Let us know you're here. Can you just say hello? Okay. But can you tell me your name? Paulson? Paulson? Paul. I got Paul. Who else is there with you? Hi, Rich. Can you tell me where David is? David is, if the theory is correct, since electronic communication with spirits, um, since the 1940s, they've said that there's other people on the other side that have been referred to as spirit technicians or, or spirit engineers, something, you know, to that line. And, um, I mean, I've got books dating back to the 1940s where they actually identify themselves as that. And then the Frank's box, which this is a cheap rip off of, um, Chris Moon that uses that started saying that there's spirit technicians on the other side that help them. And I said, you know, where did you get that term from? And he says, well, that's what they call themselves. And I said, well, interesting to know that it's really been dating back to the 40s that they've been calling themselves this through EVP. So, you know, like some of the earliest recordings, you, you could hear them very clearly say, I'm a spirit technician. So, and then, you know, we started asking names and David seems to be the one that we prevailingly get all the time. So, you know, we just assume that David is like the spirit technician. If it's true, I don't know. But, you know, when I first got the thing, I kept asking who's, who's here, who's the spirit technician, who's the spirit engineer, and I kept getting a David, David, David. Would you like us to stay or would you like us to leave? Stay. But I was already there. Yeah, but I don't want to do that. It's too close to the road. We are in the back part. No, I don't think so. I asked who was here and they said David, Sam, Michael. And then one of them said something about the trees are starting to turn. And then they asked me to go in that corner where we just were. And I didn't want to do that. So like go in the creepy corner. That's what we've called it since we've came here. It's just the creepy corner. And the reason why it's the creepy corner is because it's so damn dark. Okay, I'm gonna turn you off now and I'll turn you back on in a little while. Is that okay? If um, Thomas Edison's original thought on the whole spirit communication was right, he called it back in the 1920s and he thought that it was possible through the AM frequencies. So, I don't know. Can you say hi? But I think this, just like any other thing, you have to keep using it in order to get results from it. But I stopped using it for about a year. I stopped using it for about a year after my dad died, just because I just, I, I didn't want to go there. 
I always wondered, you know, even through EVP, which can be crystal clear, you know, this this is up for conjecture. I don't think, I, I mean, as much as information that we've gotten from it, that we were able to actually sit down and confirm, I still have a hard time really getting it. Do you know what I'm saying? EVP is so cl cut and clear, but, you know, this still comes to the theory of who are we really talking to? And, you know, the one theory that makes sense to me is that if... If, if we leave this plane and we, we go to a white light, regardless of whether what the white light is beyond, you've got that dimension or, 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 or it's the level where people don't cross. And they, they don't cross for their own personal reasons. You know, they, they, they might be afraid to be judged. They might be, you know, um, it, you know, could be a lot of different things that they would rather stay on this level than to go across the light to figure out what's there. But then you get that level of people that don't cross because they may be mentally ill or they could be criminals or, you know, they, they, they are afraid to be judged because of what they did. And I think I would be really heartbroken with the fact if I ever got my dad's voice on that, you know. So, and I mean, I have people that, that email me and call me constantly because they want to go talk to their departed loved ones. And I'm like, honestly, do you want to hear what they have to say? You know, and, and there's no guarantee that you're really talking to them. When it hits home and personal, that, that's that's something I personally don't want to deal with. Where I know people really seek that out, but now, me personally, I don't think I could deal with that.